unboxing the Alcatel 3088 Kai OS phone. In the past I've done various Nokia phones, so this is uh, something a lot cheaper. And hopefully just as good. Let's see what we got in the box. An EE, it is what it is, SIM card. Charger, the sort of one which is literally just a charger. But for a phone costing under £20, you can't expect too much, can you? Set of headphones. Good old battery. And some warranty information. And a quick start guide. Let's have a quick look then. Seems very light. Yeah, I like the feel of that. Screen protector. Let's have a look inside. Little finger grip there. I'll have to take some of this out. Ah, there we go. There we go. Nano SIM card. Storage space there for up to 32 gigabyte. And what I'm going to do is uh, put them on charge. Put my SIM card in. We'll add some more video. Having been a fan of Kai OS powered phones, I've decided to give an Alcatel a try. In the UK, generally speaking, it's only been Nokia's available. All three phones sport a different version of Kai OS. This is the early version, 2.51.1, where the shortcuts are from that key. You've got notices there and your normal menu. The later versions of Cry OS, you place, use the Navi key and press up to get to the quick toggles for Wi Fi, Bluetooth, etc. But on this one, the camera quick shortcut is on the right key and the right selection on the navi key is contacts. Plus this one, it's the same up for shortcuts, contacts is on the right hand side, right hand click on the navi key is the camera and notice as usual on the left the home screen has a new layout where if you click left you've got a quick selection to the selection of apps traditional candy bar style Lovely tactile keys, a slight little click. The Navi key is very nice. Front forward facing speaker, 
camera with LED flash, also a torch. These can be a bit fiddly on the keyboard. And let's see which one boots the fastest. So let's get ready. So that one you gotta press that button. That one, that one. <clears throat> and the race is on. Well, the Alcatel certainly wins that. 2.8 inch screens look surprisingly big. But as a user friendly phone, this one's straight out of your pocket, one hand for everything. This one is can be a little bit awkward to open single handedly. Also, the placement of the camera usually results in your finger initially being over the lens. You think, what's that, what's that? And then you realize your finger's over it. Because it's quite awkward. Plus, this one. It's just naturally to have the camera well away from your fingers. The advantage of this one over the other two as well, that front fa facing speaker is much better when you're listening and watching YouTube clips or listening to music. It just sounds so much more crisper, not having to have the sound echo of something else. I mean, there's the speaker there. Have some, you've got your, you've got your hand over it. The YouTube versions on this are both the same, but the early version, if you wanna watch a clip full screen, you, you have to select it. Let's get uh, ready for selecting the YouTube. And on your marks, get set, go. As I said, the Alcatel slightly had it, but not really worth worrying about. So, click on the clip. Now this one would carry on and just play it in portrait mode. So, what I'll be doing... Let's find out. This one... You've got to press that button there for it to do that. And with the later version of YouTube, as on the Alcatel and the Flip phone, you just press that. As soon as it realizes, it also flips. Let's check out browser performance. Now, both of these are on the same Wi Fi network. We're just going to go BBC News and see. Who goes that gets there first? Right, the Google search was about the same. Let's actually go to the BBC website. Whilst well, neither are very fast, seeing that they're both 4G, the Alcatel nailed it. Let's try Google Assistant. Open YouTube. What is the weather out today? Right now in London it's 10 degrees and 
cloudy. Today, there will be showers, with a forecasted high of 11 and a low of 3. It seems to get a sp speech recognition first time. Only I'm not in London. Available apps. Well, you've got your normal pre-installed apps such as your messages, call log, contacts. But on these later versions of KaiOS, you also have a file manager. This is very handy. There's no pre-installed Twitter anymore. They have another app called oh, here it is. TweetFit. I find it to be rubbish to be honest, but you might find it to be good. So I logged in through the browser, then pinned it to the home screen. Facebook, your music app. Obviously your Google stuff now, YouTube, Assistant, Maps. The maps are very good for working out routes and as for pedestrians, but it's not a full-blown car sat-nav, which you wouldn't really expect that on a feature phone, would you? Browser, camera, another Google search, a photo gallery, calculator, well, sorry, calendar, which can be synchronized to a Microsoft account or Google. Calculator, videos what you filmed on your own phone, voice recorder, note taker, email client for Gmails and Microsoft or Yahoo. Conver unit converter, very nice. PDF reader, works very well. Just fun stuff I downloaded. A frequency generator, test your own ears. Sun compass. I don't know about you, but this game reminds me of another game I used to play years ago, probably just me. Obviously your settings. Right, let's have a look at the store. When I first had a car US phone, there was very little in there, but now, even though it's mainly games, there is a large selection. You have your recommended, social, which now these phones have WhatsApp, and it does work surprisingly well as a messenger app, not for voice calls, video calls, but as a messenger, it's okay. You can still send photographs, sound clips, but your limit for downloading stuff is eight megabytes. So if someone sends you a long video clip, you won't be watching it. Various games, utilities. There's gonna be in different parts of the world. You have different selections. Style. News. Very good. I, the QR reader, which I downloaded, that works surprisingly well if the QR is of a decent size because these cameras don't have a sharp focus. So it needs to be a big QR. The news app. Advert first. It's 
reasonably responsive. In fact, this phone is much more responsive than the other two I've had. Like everything, you can make it crash if you try hard enough. Calendar can be synchronized to Google or Microsoft. Same your contacts. With the Google services on this phone, you can sign in, if, especially if you have another smartphone, so you synchronize things. But if you're anti-Google, just don't sign in, and you can still use them with no problems. It's just that you search from scratch each time. The music player. It's the most sluggish thing on you. But it's probably because I got so much music on a 32 gigabyte memory card. With 204 albums on there. It's gonna take a little while to populate. The playlist is still stuck with the most played, recently added, and Discover. But the Discover's tracks on your SD card. So it's, that's the same as recently added, really, isn't it? Or well, stuff you don't play. FM radio works fine. This did come with a pair of very cheap headphones that you saw in there earlier on. The games are quite fun. Let's have a look. All this seems to start with the advert. Which is advertising another game. That's a weird thing, isn't it? They're all free, so you can't really moan, can you? I did miss not having a snake on this phone. But equally, I didn't miss having no bloatware, which I couldn't remove. The Nokias do have some demos of games, which don't even run very well, and you cannot remove them. Well, it's because these run on Qualcomm processors but this one actually runs on a Spreadtrum processor it is just faster maybe Alcatel have done a better job at optimizing the firmware but also the battery on this one seems to last so much longer and yet all three of them got roughly the same size battery the cameras All are two megapixel, but I'll show an example of the pictures where the color on this one is more true to life, but these maybe give a more pleasing result. So faces look pinker, but this one, everything seems to be when you photograph it, it seems to be closer up so both have their advantages but you're not buying these things for cameras anyway
So my conclusion is that I was going to buy one just for work. Like I use it, I use my phones as a secondary phone. The Alcatel would be the one I'd buy. The Alcatel 3088X. I think the X stands for the European market. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.